Oh, I, I mean, I would certainly it. take it. Like most, many people would take it. Now think, like that is a good amount of money. If you made $100,000 a year for the rest of your life, do you know how long it would take you to get to a billion dollars? Like no. 10,000 years. You would have to make $100,000 for 10,000 years to make a billion dollars. Wait, so wait, I don't understand. So how, how often are you making this? So if, 100,000. No, no. So I mean, every year for the rest of your life, you make six figures. You make $100,000 a year. So what do you oh, oh, no, no, I understand that. So yes. what are you suggesting about billionaires? How are they making that? Money? Think about how much money, money it is. But I'm saying, how are they making that much money? Because, <laughs> because the it way take, you it make... It will take us... Uh, uh, it's because the way most of these billions, the way it ends up working is if you are a billionaire, it means you're probably, there was some year where you made $500 million at once. It's about investing, so it's like exponential growth. Like, yeah, it's the sort of thing where like, you own a company that gets big and then you sell it to somebody else who has tons of money. And so this is, like just think about that difference. You think of somebody who makes $100,000 a year as well off, at least I do. I think like that's a like that's a happy amount of money. If I make that much, I'm thrilled. And yet, think about that well-off person compared to a billionaire. Like that is so much money that just think about like you are literally above and beyond the like the levels of opportunity that are accessible to somebody with that much money. And just think like how can we have a society with equality of opportunity when that's the difference in wealth? Now. Again, though, going back to the medium class, the solution clearly, and we all agreed, was not to just take everyone's money, throw it in a pot, and divide it evenly, because that also has problems with it. So there's this weird thing where, on the one hand, we look at this and go, oh my god, that is so much money. But on the other hand, uh, we go, but we don't want to like take everybody's money away. Also, if you are that billionaire, if you make, say, or say you make $10 million a year, there's also a sense in which people very rarely want to go, you know what, I'm going to give away most of my money in taxes because that's more fair. Like very few people are willing to say that. But at the same time, we all on the other side look at this and go, how is this a fair system? We're having that much money. Like if you have a billion dollars, you can do just about anything in, this, in the world. If you get in trouble with the law, what do you do? Pay. pay your bail, and you have the yeah. best lawyers imaginable. If you you want your kid to go to Princeton, what do you do? Oh, that's you, you get so here's here's the way. It, so here's the thing: if you ever get a billion dollars and you want your kid to go to any school, here's what you do: you pay for them to build a building in your name. They will then accept you to that school. That is the quickest way to get there. Like, that's literally how Donald Trump's son-in-law got into Harvard. Uh, like, Ivanka's husband, Jared Kushner, got into Harvard because his parents bought a building. And we're just like, here's the money. Yeah, that's the quickest way to get in. Yeah. Or did any of you follow the whole, like, cheating scandal with the SATs? Did you, yeah. What, did you, so, somebody explain the story while I drink some water. Well, I don't know the whole story, but, like, some celebrity... Who is that? Was it um, the lady from The Desperate Housewives? I mean, I don't know if y'all like that. Yeah, I, think <laughs> I don't know her name. Oh, and one from Full House, too. The lady from Full House, yeah. too. Well. Basically, what it was, was a bunch of wealthy actors and actresses started bribing people who were giving out the tests to let their students, like, let their kids cheat, cheat or tell them the answers ahead of time and other things. They basically just were like, we've got a ton of money. The people who are, like, um, administering these tests do not make a ton of money. We will give them a lot of money to help our kids cheat. And they were getting into top colleges with great scores on their SATs. But they were underperforming. Mm -hmm. And then once they got to the school, obviously they weren't very good because they were not qualified to be there. Um, but, and so that's the, the sort of things you see. It's just like money opens doors in a way that, you know, we all know it opens doors. And then you see the examples and you're like, oh yeah, 10,000 years worth of $100,000 worth of money is a lot of money to do things with. Um, and also just things like, the just time, going back to time, is if you have that much money from tech, you have a chef, you have a personal trainer, you have a driver, you have a jet, 
Just think about all the ways in which your life is made easier and how much time you can devote to doing other things that you and your kids, your kids do not have to worry about, you know, having to get a job when they turn 16. Your kids do not have to worry about, if your child starts struggling in school, what do you do? You get a tutor. You to buy them a new computer. You buy, and so this is the sort of thing in which like tech is both feeding into, and just don't lose sight of the fact that yes, though, tech has also brought opportunities to people who've never had it before. The person who gets their first computer and wants to learn computer science, even though they are the first person in their family to ever have a computer, can now get that job and can apply for jobs in a city halfway around the world and get hired. If you grow up somewhere rural and you get good with computers and you want to come to the United States to work, that is now very much a possibility for you because you are now able to apply for jobs halfway around the world, show them that you're skilled, and get the paperwork necessary to work in the United States. So these doors are opening. And then on the other side, though, we see differences in income inequality that we've never seen before. And we've seen ways in which people with tech are getting more power compared to those who don't have it in ways than ever before. And it's just a complicated mess that no one really knows what to do with. And on the one side, we see Google with more money than we've ever seen before and the power that comes with that. And on the other side, we see that the internet is giving Bernie Sanders the opportunity to run a campaign off of funding from students. And so you see it going in both directions, pulling both ways. Um, there was a hand, you did. Yeah, that was me, actually. Even like there are people nowadays that pay someone to take the SAT test for him or her with the fake IDs. And I, and I heard a report, like a case report that one student was like, was arrested for fraud when he was like taking at the SAT test for 11 different students. Yeah, you. these are other ones where you can literally hire somebody, and if you have enough money, you can get good fake IDs. You can like, get, like, just about, like, and, like, that's, like... 2,500 2, per test. Yeah, two, that's, that's, like, and because of the ease of making money and exchanging money, like, that is the way, and it's now, it's now also much easier to find people who are willing to do that sort of thing because of the internet. Now you just go somewhere on the internet and post a post like, I am so and so looking for this, and if you know where you're looking, you can find people to take tests for you. Reddit, like, Reddit. Like, if you want to know how to do just about anything illegal, you can find it on the internet. That's the other side of it. Um, it's not just the how-to good, it's also the how-to bad. You know, you ever wanted to know what it felt like to be poisoned by toad poison? Yeah, you can do and go and do that. Um, you want to, you know, figure out how to make a 3D printed firearm? Go and find that. Um, all of these sorts of things, for good and bad. Um, all right, so the main takeaway here is that there isn't a clear answer to whether tech is making increased equality of opportunity or decreasing it. It's both and it's complicated. And it's a sort of complicated question though that needs to be asked and thought about if we're gonna make it through the world okay. Um, and it's something to ask yourself. And like personally, how do I, like if this is what the new economy looks like, how do I end up on top? How do I survive? How do I stay afloat? And also things like, is this world what I want? Or is, should more be put in place to make things more equal? Like, on the one hand, if I ever got rich, I wouldn't want them to take my money away. But at the same time, if somebody's making, if somebody has a trillion dollars and I have like 20, it feels like I should in some sense, like it would be better if we equaled the playing field to some degree. All right, so um, as we talked about at the beginning of class, I uh, totally forgot with the, um, Oh, I think I, I do remember why I made today a short class. Um, but uh, class is over, is the, is, the, is the long and short of it, because we only had half a class's worth of material for today, because I put only half a class's worth of material on the syllabus. So, um, I'm going to put your... I'm going to finish marking down...